Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Brody Consulting Group. To get more information about our publishing and coaching services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Brody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Lynn Shirell, best-selling author of You've Arrived. Lynn, welcome to the show. Hello, and thank you. <laughs> you ready to get started? I am. All right, let's get to it. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Well, I primarily work with people and write my own books around nonfiction. So, um, but I think it, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, well, write what you know. It, it's a, a proven, tried and true, uh, but write about what you know. Write about what makes sense. Write about what what write write about your perceptions that's probably the number one most valuable thing that anybody can share is how they perceive the world you know as a writer we give people the opportunity to see things with uh, through our lenses of perception so that's probably the biggest thing to do is to just write about what moves you compels you stirs your soul what you know well, and I think as you mentioned that too, that that also helps with the creative process because if it's something that you're truly passionate about, it's going to come out a lot easier. Absolutely. And, you know, even for fiction, I don't know fiction very well. I love to read fiction though. <laughs> so I will tell you, I read Hugh Howey's series. I read Veronica Ross series, you know, the Wool series and then the Divergent series. Amazing. Ama- it was compelling and gripping and I was right in there with them. And I think what you just said right there, passion, that makes the difference. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? I would say, and this might sound kind of weird, but confidence. (laughs) You know, a lot of times you think in your mind, oh my gosh, this message has already been heard or somebody else has said this, or how can I say it better than what's already out there, things like that. But really, those are just your own mental critics and barriers. It's When you just show up with your perception, there is no one else who has your unique perception based on your experience, your filters, your values, who you are. So um, I think confidence is it. I I was a writer for years and years and years, and I just thought, well, nobody really, you know, wants to hear this or whatever. And it turned out I I now have like 15 books on Amazon, (laughs) and I have not turned them all into print books yet, but... I will eventually. I just decided to start sharing some of my stuff and people were very appreciative and I had no idea that that would be the response. So I delayed for more than a decade putting my my work out there. So um, I would say confidence is probably it. So... Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. I was I struggled with my first book. It took me four years to get it out. And then in 2015, I finally got it out. Then I started writing a couple of books about my motivational seminars. Then we wrote a couple of books about publishing and then travel. And then somehow three years later, I have 13 bestsellers out there. And it's the same thing. It's just you need to get it out there. And one of the biggest themes that we've had in this show is done is better than perfect. Just get it out there because it's going to really help a lot of people. Absolutely. Those are people who are waiting for the message that they can uniquely hear from you. You know, even if it's been said somewhere else or whatever, if it if it didn't move them, it wasn't the right timing and they just couldn't hear it. When you say it in the way that they need to hear it, it's a game changer for that person who's waiting for your message. So so just step out there in faith that people need what you're sharing. So just do it. And and get 13 bestsellers. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> well, and the funny thing is one of the books was actually called Just Do It. <laughs> That's awesome. It was about fighting procrastination and goal setting. So it was the uh, the, the perfect title for that book. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. So let's That's talk awesome. a little bit about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launch that worked well. Oh, I have a few of them for you. Um, the first of all, I... I work a lot with Amazon and on Amazon it's just really important that you have the right categories for your book and the ones that they give you when you upload your book are not 
exhaustive of their list. So you want to look at other books in your, uh, other authors to see their books who are like you and look at the categories they have listed because uh, there's a lot more than what you're going to see there. So one is having the right categories. Um, another is making sure that you have digital presence for your book. So you want to have a website. Oh, and you want to have your uh, um, Amazon author page set up. Uh, it's important. People like to know who's behind the book. So then you've got to have some sort of digital presence for your book, whether it's a landing page or something. Um, having a mailing list is great. Inviting your friends to share the news. Uh, what else? I mean, uh, having a video, um, doing interviews around your book, um, being on a podcast like this. I mean, this is such a gift, Paul. This is really great um, for authors to be able to share what they're doing, what they're up about. So um, what else? Having a thought leadership platform, meaning that you have a signature conversation and that that is a theme that is consistent throughout your social marketing your emails, um, your talks, your presentations. If you get a chance to speak, well, you know, hands down, that's that's number one because people get to meet you. And there's something, there, it, there's a difference between taught teachings with a T and caught teachings with a C. The taught teachings are the ones that are oh, mental, they're reading it or whatever, but the caught teachings when they're in the, in the sea, when they're swimming in your energy, that has much more impact. So anytime you get a chance to speak or to share what you're um, up about with uh, interviews, podcasts, videos, live events, webinars, do it, just do it. <laughs> Well, you make a great point with that. It's all about building your platform. And one one of the things I think gets missed the most is the Amazon author page where it's free of charge. And it's, it shocks me how many people do not take advantage of that because you get to add that information, you can add pictures, you can add video, and it doesn't cost anything. And the great thing is when you have your book out there, you have your name right below the title. People can click on it, then get more information about that book or your other books. It's just such a great way to utilize the start of getting that platform built. Even if you don't have a website at that point, you can at minimum have that Amazon author page and have some good content on it. Exactly. Exactly. And then anybody who subscribed to you will get a notification of your next book. It's yeah. funny you mention that. I actually, um, so, so after all these books the last few years, the one thing I wanted to add to the Amazon author page was a call to action because especially when you have that follow button. So what I added right um, before anything about my biography, I put in there, click on the link below to follow me. And just to add in that little extra call to action, just so people realize, oh, there is a follow button, and I can actually get updates when this author has a new book out. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, yep. let's, let's talk about your favorite book. So what is your favorite book, and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? I really... I I, I'm an avid reader, and I do. A, I, I love to read things around personal mastery, um, as well as like you heard sci-fi, and you know, I, I just I love to read. I love words. Words are my friend. Um, but the the language of emotions by Carla McLaren is one of my top five. I would say, um, in that book is uh, she basically moves through each of the emotions to explain what's behind them, and it becomes a process of self-discovery that is really powerful. Oh, there's another book that did that, Living the Truth. Or, or Truth in Living, that was another one. So those are two amazing books. And then The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle was, you know, just be present, you know, life is happening now. This is not a dress rehearsal and you don't get it back. So uh, for me, my, my love language is time. And so where I spend my time and how I invest my time, time is a big deal for me. So being present is just a re that's the powerful place to live your life, so. Those are a few of my favorites. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? Well, given that I'm such a reader, that is a tough question. But the first quote that came to mind is uh, a paraphrase of a poem by Amelia Earhart. How can life grant us boon of living unless we dare the soul's dominion? Each time we make a choice, we pay with courage to behold the restless day. It's like, ooh, the soul's dominion. It's like, mm, love that. 
I love that. Or Seth Speaks is a series of books that are channeled, but consciousness is a state of becoming, and it's just true. Or Oscar Wilde, when he said, a dreamer is one who can only find his way by moonlight, and his punishment is that he sees the dawn before the rest of the world. Just rich, just rich, isn't it? So of those quotes, why did they have, why did they have such uh, an impact on you? Because they're awesome quotes, but I'd like to know what specific impact they had with you and your journey. For, uh, in, it's, it's so easy to get caught up in what's happening every day. Mm. So, you know, there's all the stuff of living, there's all the distractions, there's all the obligations and responsibilities and all the things you're supposed to do to be a responsible contributing member of society. And, you know, all the multiple roles that we play, you know, sister, friend, daughter, um, colleague, client, mentor, whatever they are. It just so much pulls at you so often that just to remember that you are here to live your soul's dominion, to become your best self, to, um, to dream dreams. And to hopefully for me, I like to, I'm visionary and it tickles me to be on that leading edge. And so uh, professionally, I'm a catalyst. I, I'm a change agent. And it's because of that. Like I'm so far out on the curve that, you know, sometimes it's a little hard. You know, it's hard being the first out there. You know, you see the dawn before the rest of the world. So uh, there was a comfort for me in all of those to say, wait a minute, there is something much bigger than the surface of life that we take as uh, the most important thing. The most, Im what seems important isn't. The urgent might need to get done, but what's really important is that quiet space that waits for us to return to it. And that is what really matters. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I thank you for elaborating on that because those are some great quotes. Well, Lynn, I wanna thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Uh, you can look for me um, at mycreativecatalyst.com or my name, which is Lynn, L-Y-N-N-S-C-H-E-U-R-E-L-L, lynnsherell.com. Well, Lynn, I want to thank you once again for being a guest on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how to get your book published with a proven system that works, grab a free copy of my book at getpublishedpodcast.com.